Hi, welcome uh, to this video. We're going to develop problems and applications. The exercises 5 to 9 of the basic tools of finance. This is the chapter 27. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the fifth question says, for each of the following kinds of insurance, give an example of behavior that can be called more a hazard or and another example of behavior that can be called adverse selection. So first of all, what is the definition of adverse selection? So adverse selection is a problem derived from asymmetric information. Basically, the, we know that a high-risk person is more likely to apply for insurance than a low-risk person. So it means that the insurance or uh, the enterprise doesn't know properly the old knowledge that the other part has. Other uh, definition here should be the moral hazard. So moral hazard is like uh, you don't act uh, as usual or you don't act as you have to act because people tend to be not as careful as without insurance. So here is the issue. We have from one side health insurance and from the other car insurance. From the health insurance a problem of adverse selection could be the situation of people with hereditary diseases. So they know that maybe um, the, the family they are tent or likely they will face some important disease that will cost a lot so naturally those people tend to be more careful uh, about their about her or his health so for this reason those people contract an health insurance a health insurance for the case of uh, more hazard could be the risk activities maybe if you are conscious that you have um, maybe your insurance and for for example you're traveling maybe you take some risk as for example trying some food making some uh, risky activities just in case you know you are kind of protected because of your insurance so then this should be the case of more hazard regarding the car insurance in the adverse election maybe you are conscious that you live in a place that is risky and you maybe you need to avoid parking on the street however uh, you plan to to leave your car there because you know that you have a car insurance so then it should be a problem of adverse selection in the part of more hazard uh, you know that you have uh, your insurance so maybe you are not afraid of taking uh, for example some risk and maybe driving kind of aggressive sometimes because you know that your uh, insurance will protect you next question which kind of stock would you expect to pay the higher average return stock in an industry that is very sensitive to economic conditions such as an automaker or is stuck in an industry that is relatively insensitive to economic conditions, such a water company. Why? So first, uh, we need to know the real inverse uh, relationship between risk on, well, it should be like risk and return. Actually, it should be a direct relationship. The riskier, the higher uh, return you expect to take. So then, when we are talking about the stock that is very sensitive, this is naturally riskier compared with the water company. So we are facing more risk, then, as a consequence, we are uh, getting more volatility. So the prices oscillate in a, in a like higher and maybe down this difference above and, and just like down is definitely higher so then you are waiting for a higher return when we are talking as uh, something that is relative sensitive just like the water we are talking about less volatility so we are assuming lower risk so as a consequence lower expected return next question uh, a company faces two kind of risks a firm specific risk is that a competitor might enter its market 
and take some of its customers. A market risk is that the economy might enter a recession, reducing sales. Which of these two risks would more likely cause the company's shareholders to demand a higher return? Why? Well, uh, here the stakeholders they are tempted to discuss or to demand something that is controlled by the company. Otherwise, they cannot claim about it because the company cannot control. So then, uh, recession, we know that is not easy to control. But maybe the strategies that this company is taking in order to face the new competitor, maybe innovation, prices, strategies, new places, new um, new shops, or uh, maybe new strategies to, to, to have like uh, this uh, competition under control could be the thing that can demand to the demand the 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 shareholders and then maybe they will demand a, uh, a, a higher return when they are having better results next when company executives buy and sell stock based on private information they obtain as part of their jobs they are engaged in insider trading Give an example of inside information that might be useful for buying or selling stock. So imagine the situation that you are working for X company and then you know that uh, the directives um, of your company, they are talking about merger and acquisition of another, uh, actually a really huge competitor. So it is going to make a higher portion of the market for that company. And it, this is not known for all the public. So definitely we are talking about privileged information that is not reflected in the price because the market doesn't know that. So this should be uh, an example for that. So actually this is considered most of the times as a good move. So the prices can uh, go up so you can speculate and buy today's stocks in order to sell after the, the the news uh is provided and maybe you're going to take like uh money or a return for that b those who trade stocks based on inside information usually earn very high rates of return does the fact violate the fishy market hypothesis absolutely because this is not public information and remember the fishing markets hypothesis stands that the price that is reflected in the market is the best indicator of the situation of that company so obviously the prices they follow a random walk and you cannot predict the prices however this is the best indicator that everybody has so this is not public information C. Insider, ins, insider trading is illegal. Why do you suppose that is? Yes, because this is not public information. Furthermore, people they are taking advantage. We are talking about asymmetric information. And actually, when we signed a contract, uh, a, a contract, a work contract, usually most of the time the company established that you will manage confidential information. And because of the contract, you cannot take advantage of this information. So then this is fixed in the contract. This is not legal because of the like the framework law established in the market. So for this reason, is that situation illegal? Nine. Jamal has a utility function, which is a utility that depends on the wealth and then the wealth uh, square root of wealth or wealth elevated to 1 over 2. Where W is his wealth in millions of dollars and U is the utility he obtains from that wealth. In the final stage of a game show, the host offered Jamal a choice between A, 4 million for sure, or B, a gamble that pays 1 million with probability 0 0.6 and 9 million with probability 0 0.4. First, A. Graph Jamel's utility function. Is he risk averse? Explain. So here is the function. So here we are talking this should be the y axis, this should be the x axis, and this definitely should be what we talk the independent variable. This should be the dependent on W behavior. So here we have utility in the y-axis and here is the shape. 
Why? Because the square root of w, it starts like kind of fast, it means that this, the, the slope is kind of steep, but with the time it's getting flatter. Because, for example, when you are taking the, the square root of 9, should be 3, but, this, but the square root of uh, 16 should be 4. So then, the difference from 9 to 16 is 7, but the result should be 3 and 4. So this is getting flatter and flatter and flatter. So this is the shape of that uh, function. And we're important thing, we're just graphing or we're just drawing for the positive ones. Because you know that this should be something here as well, because do you know that the square root of 4 should be 2 or should be minus 2, because 2 times 2 is 4 and minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. However, this uh, cannot be a function, because they remember, the definition of a function is like one part of the domain, it belongs just one and exclusively one part of the range, which this not be the case. So this function is just defined for this uh, for this part, for the positive part of the Cartesian plane. And here is the wealth. So this is the graph. Uh, is he risk averse? Well, this is a concave curve. So all the time that you have something like that, like it looks like an uh, U, uh, like upside down, this is a concave curve. And when we are talking a concave curve, and I said that getting more wealth does not increase the same proportion to utility, it increases even lower for the for the second part or at least from uh, after certain amount of or wealth and then uh, javel is risk averse so remember concave curve also you upside down we're talking that risk averse then does a or b offer gemel a higher expected price explain your reasoning with appropriate calculation hint the expected value of a random variable is the weighted average of the possible outcomes, where the probabilities are the weights. So here is the, fir the first uh, gamble. So here is utility, but we are not going to concentrate in the, uh, in the function at this point. We know that the gamble A should be 4 million, so this person should receive 4 million. What is about the gamble B? should receive 1 million with probability of 0 0.6 and 9 million with probability of 0 0.4. So this should be the expected, uh, the expecting uh, earn. Should be 0 0.6 times 1 plus 0 0.4 times 9. So we just compute that and we get uh, 4.2. So then um, what should be higher expected price? Definitely should be the second situation, the gamble B. C. Does A or B offer a JAML a higher expected utility? Again, show your calculation. So here is kind of different because when we are talking about expected utility, we are, uh, we are talking about utility. So then it means that we need the utility function. So then the gamble A should be the expected utility of the gamble A and the gamble A should be utility evaluated in four. So we're going just to make the square root of four. So the expected utility for the gamble A should be two. What about for the second situation? So the gamble B would be the expected utility of that function evaluated for the gamble B. The gamble B should be 0 0.6 times the, the function utility plus 0 0.4 times the functional utility. Then we just make one a square root of one, the positive result, nine square root, and then we have this one, and then we just make the multiplication, and as a result, we know that the expected utility for gamble B should be 1.8. So then, uh, what is the higher one? So the higher one naturally should be A, gamble A. How we can represent these values in this one? So then this is the wealth. So for four, you, this should be the utility how we can get this one. Basically, you get 9, the uh, the one possibility, and one, uh, 9 and 1, the second possibility. You make, you join these two points with a uh, rect, and then you have something like that. Then you make this one, you like weight due to the probabilities that provided by the exercise, and you end in something like that, which is 1.8. So these are uh, this rect actually, this should be the combination, this will provide uh, actually the expected utility. 
um, here uh, should be something I guess should be better like this because you need to reflect that uh, in this one so this should be the well this this should be the expected utility for 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 that function actually I would say that should be better something like this because this should be reflected in this okay then should GML pick A or B? Why? Well, here we know that this is to be the two situations. Should so should pick naturally higher one, which should be gamble A, because it provides a higher utility. Okay, I hope it has helped. You can uh, you have understood these basic uh, ideas, basic questions of finance. If you have any suggestion, any comment, I'm more than open to hear you. And if you know that maybe it should be a other way or something maybe can be changed, I'm more than open to hear you. Thank you so much and see you next video. Bye bye.